from the edge of the spectacular French Alps on the southern shoreline of France's largest lake. It's the third round of the 2018 UIM Formula One World Championship for power boating at the 22nd Grand Prix of France. Hi, everybody. I'm your host, Steve Michael, along with my broadcasting partner, Jonathan Jones. And on a perfect summer afternoon here near the Swiss border, we are just moments away from the start of today's Grand Prix. However, before we begin the stories and leading you up to today's race, let's give you a feel for this magic region with a video postcard of this Pearl of the Lake here in Evian, France. Elegantly perched on the border between France and Switzerland, northeast of Geneva in the East French Alps, Evian's internationally renowned healing waters have lured health-conscious visitors from around the world since 1824. It's France's most celebrated spa resort. But this is only the beginning. There are so many must-sees on your tour to Evian. Start by going to the famous water and musical gardens, followed by a trip to the thermal spa. Then try your luck at the largest theme casino in Europe. And how about a 35-minute boat trip across the lake to the lovely Riviera town of Lausanne on the Swiss side? Evian recently won the award for the best resort in France by the World Travel Awards, judging the total beauty, the proximity to summer and winter activities, all along with its famous healing waters adding up to one of Europe's must-see areas. Feel more culture. Feel more water. Feel more relaxation. Feel more fun. Feel Evian France. The race circuit here is situated on Lake Le Mans that covers 580 square kilometers and 310 meters deep. Jonathan, this has to be one of the roughest circuits in the world, and drivers really don't tame it. They just survive it, don't they? Yeah, it certainly is one of the most turbulent, Steve. As you can see there, down past the start-finish line, 590 meters, then into number two and turn three, both left-handers, and down that long 460 meters straight, round the right-hander again, 450 meters into five and six. Watch out for this area. There's been a lot of rollers coming in there. That could be one tough area for the drivers uh, this weekend. And then down 360 meters down to the start-finish line. Probably the most dangerous or toughest and difficult circuits on the tour. Two weeks ago, Rising returned to London's Royal Victoria Docks. It saw 19 drivers from 11 different nations take on the super-fast, turn 1.8 kilometer old style circuit here's a look back london would prove to be a special challenge for both the drivers and officials as they instituted a rolling start and right from the start a good battle with peter morant trying to make a move and go to third and then sean torrente your points later took out both boys and was disqualified and then eric edna sweden had a problem with his left spots and then alex corella with 19 laps to go Crash for only the third time in his career. In the final 19 laps, two-boat battle. Eric Stark wins by 3.34 seconds as the driver from Sweden wins for the third time in his career. 2018 is a family oh, affair yeah. from Team China's Philippe Schepp and Pierre Morin. And the three-time world champion and his son-in-law both made the podium for the first time last race in London. The two talk about their racing together, protecting each other in the run for what could be a good team championship. He make a good job this year. Last year he learned very well and it's better and better. And for me it's good because it's uh, just behind me and he protect my position. It's, uh, it's a dream. Uh, no, the strategy is not to pass him, it's uh, to push him to uh, catch Eric and uh, make the best result for the, all the team. Yes, for sure. We want to uh, win the race, but uh, first it's the championship. We don't want to lose on one turn uh, the championship. It's difficult to manage the race and win the race, but uh, we'll see. For sure we push on maximum. Well, the resort town of Evian is famous for its old palaces and thermal spas, and it's also known for attracting the largest starting lineup of drivers on the European calendar. Let's take a look at how they qualify for today's 22nd Grand Prix of France. Eric Stark, second pole in a row from him. Philippe Shep just hoping to finish a race for the first time here in Evian. As you look farther down in the second page of this exciting grid this afternoon, Jean Torrente disappointing not making the Q3 top six session. As you look down, Eric Eddins hoping for more. And then Alex Corella is a two-time winner here in a row, way down in the 13th spot. He's got to be bitterly disappointed. And then, of course, uh, Jonas Anderson and Sami Celio, both changing engines, coming out here at the end of the field today. 
So as we continue on, Team Abu Dhabi's new recruit, Eric Stark, stole the show on his final qualifying lap yesterday to take the pole by one one hundredth of a second. And he flew by the competition in spectacular fashion. Here's his thoughts on his historic qualifying efforts. I can't imagine how the boat came down. Like, and that I was, you know, able to do the pole. I was losing a lot of time in that jump, but somehow I had a fantastic lap before. In the end, we took the pole and great day for him let's see if he can carry it on a four-time world champion alex corella has won from the pole as we mentioned the last two years around today it's a lot more difficult he's starting 13th what will happen what happened yesterday and what's his strategy today some issue with my radio and yesterday we go out from the from the couture and uh, okay will be long race i will push my maximum i want to finish in the top six for sure so with the with weight of uh, and wind I can, I can i think pass more people easily than uh, flat water okay finish blah 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 how do we hey Either that or we <coughs> do we do we uh, do we throw out London or do you want to save London? Last time we threw out the look back on the race. Um, this race circuit is situated on Lake Lamont. Jonathan, this has to be one of the roughest circuits in the world. The drivers really don't tame it; they really just survive it, don't they? It is a tough one, Stevens. As we can see there, down past the start finish line, 590 meters into turn number two. Watch out, there's a lot of rollers coming in on that side. 100 meters round into number three, down into the only right hander we have at four. 450 meters into five and six. And this again, another tricky area for these boats here because the water is really rough. Round number six and then straight down, 360 meters down to that uh, finish line. Pure excitement. Now, two weeks ago, racing returned to London's Royal Victoria docks that saw 19 drivers from 11 different nations take on the super fast two turn, 1.8 kilometer old style circuit. Here's a look back. London would prove to be a special challenge for both the drivers and officials as they instituted a rolling start. And right from the start, a good battle with Peter Morant trying to make a move and go to third. And then Sean Torrente, your points leader, took out both boys and was disqualified. And then Eric Edna Sweden had a problem with his left spots. And then Alex Corella with 19 laps to go, crashed for only the third time in his career. In the final 19 laps, two boat battle. Eric Stark wins by 3.34 seconds as the driver from Sweden wins for the third time in his career. Well, 2018 is a family affair for Team China's Philippe Shep and Peter Moran. The two talk about racing together and protecting each other in their run for the coveted championship. He made a good job this year. Last year he learned very well and it's better and better. And for me it's good because it's uh, just behind me and he protects my position. It's, uh, it's a dream. Uh, no, the strategy is not to pass him, it's uh, to push him to uh, catch Eric and uh, make the best result for the, all the team. Yes, for sure. We want to uh, win the race, but uh, first it's the championship. We don't want to lose on one turn uh, the championship. It's difficult to manage the race and win the race, but uh, we'll see. For sure we push on maximum. Well, the racing resort town here is famous for old palaces and thermal spas, and it's known for also attracting the largest starting field of drivers on the European calendar. Let's take a look at how they qualify for today's 22nd Grand Prix of France. Eric Stark, second pole in a row in the last three weeks. He'll lead the field. Philippe Shep, all eyes on him. However, he has not finished a race yet. Sean Torrente down in that seventh spot, disappointed he didn't get to Q3. And you look farther down, you can see that Alex Corella, the two-time winner here the last two years in a row, really disappointed. He's down in 13th spot, farther down. Jonas Anderson down in the 18th spot. Sami Celio, two-time world champion, and he will start last today. Now, Team Abu Dhabi's new recruit, Eric Stark, stole the show on his final qualifying lap yesterday to take the pole by one one-hundredth of a second. He flew by the competition in spectacular fashion. Here's his thoughts about his historic qualifying effort. I, I can't imagine how the boat came down, like, and that I was, you know, able to do the pole. I was losing a lot of time in that jump, but somehow I had a fantastic lap before. In the end, we took the pole, and it's true, amazing.
Great day for him. Now, four-time world champion Alex Corella has won from the pole in the last two years, as we mentioned. Today will be a lot more difficult for him starting 13th. What happened yesterday, Alex, and what is your strategy today? Some issue with my radio, and yesterday we go out from the from the couture, and uh, okay, will be long race. I will push my maximum. I want to finish in the top six for sure. So with the, with way the uh, end wind, I, I can I think pass more people easily than uh, flat water. Spectacular day. Tens of thousands of fans have come here. Powerboat racing fans from around Lac Lama, from Switzerland to France, have come here in anticipation for the start of today's Grand Prix. The drivers are ready, as are their crews. It's time to settle that age-old question of who will be king on water today as we bring you the 22nd Grand Prix of France. On the pole, Eric Stark, a newcomer, as we mentioned, with uh, Team Abu Dhabi, ready to try to make it two in a row. He's fighting his way back from a, a Miring that he started the season, didn't even know if he'd have a ride, and then he's come up uh, very strongly. He finished 10th in uh, the first race in Portimao, and then one in London as we get close to the one-minute mark now. Luis Ribeiro, the race director, the UIM official, as you look down farther with less than a minute to go. All eyes now glued in the official starter. The crew starting to step off the sponsons on the boat. The driver's very much alone here as they plan their strategy. 42 laps, 42 tours around this 2.08 kilometer, 1.2 mile circuit. Today the temperature, lovely. It's 28 degrees centigrade, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Wind maybe less than two knots. They're reporting about 1.6 knots. A perfect day. It looks almost like a 50 mile swimming pool. As we get set to go now, all drivers now focused on what they need to do to get this start right. The top six will go to the far side of the pin. It'll be turn number five from six all the way down to 19 to go around the demarcation buoy. So the top six will be heading right for the far side, which will be the northwest corner of the course. 30-second board comes out. All eyes now glued on the start lights as we'll wait for three rows of lights to come down. And once they've got all three lights on, the lights will go off. They're under starter's orders. And once they do, we will start this 42-lap odyssey here. All right, the first row coming on. Second row, third lights. And we hold our breath and explode away from the dock. As 10,000 horsepower accelerate from zero to 160 kilometers in about four seconds. Eric Stark now on the outside and feeling the pressure on the outside by his teammate, Daniel Quimsey, who's pushing hard in third. He wants a win desperately here. It's been 26 races since he got his last one. As now Eric Stark side by side dropping back. Philippe Shep, a bit of a surprise for the driver from France who leads this championship as they come out of turn number six here. Side by side, Team Abu Dhabi. As you see them with Shep dropping back to third third place as they fight down into turn number one now heading for two Jonathan what a dramatic start for Thaniel Quimsy absolutely fantastic I think that Jap was caught mapping on the on the start line there he missed the lights because for sure Stark had a blinding start and just behind him Fani he kept his uh, line coming into turn number one then he came into turn number two he was allowed to close over he, he blocked uh, Jap who was in that third position gave him some dirty water and now the competition is really between these two Two drivers from Abu Dhabi with at the moment Chap in third and losing some ground. Contando up to full. All right, Contando hoping to finish this race as the driver from Italy starting his 172nd start. Hopes he can finish. He's only finished three of the last 11. As you take a look at Eric Eden trying to sneak his way through. The rookie pushing, going into turn number five. But as they come out of the final corner, coming down, and you can see Eric Eden just holding Thani out. Quimsey who's nipping at his heels. Oh, my. Team Abu Dhabi, one, two. As Eric Eden almost found himself losing it. As Team Abu Dhabi is fighting with Thani out. Quimsey, a big day for them because the shake of Abu Dhabi is here, and they really want to impress. And right now, they are doing that, Jonathan. One, two with Shep in third. Yeah, I think now the start has just started to settle down there. Oh, my goodness, that was close from Chiap there. Nearly hit the turn boy there on the outside of uh, Thani al Kwamzi, the Abu Dhabi driver now trying to make up a bit of ground. But, uh, you know, that bit that he lost on the first lap is really hurting him because to catch Thani is going to be one thing. To overtake him is going to be quite tough as Stark is pulling away from the rest of the field. He is. It was a half a second on that first lap, but it's really stretching out now on the margin as they 
worked their way on the back side of the course, heading over toward the northwest corner through turn number five, through turn number six. There you see on the left of your screen, Bartek Marzawak. And oh my, he's in a real fight with Sean Torrente. Torrente made up one position. He started seventh. He's up to six. He's trying to get up into the top five. Yeah, Torrente, not such a good start. He dropped back down a couple of slots. He was down to eighth on the first lap. But he's slowly but surely making up that little bit of ground now. As we go back to the leaders, you can see Stark just coming out of shot. Fanny Alquanzi taking a tight line. You can see Chap having to take avoiding action, moving to the outside, losing a lot of ground there, Steve, as they tear down that back straight. Eric Stark is making good his escape. He is starting to run away from his teammate, Jonathan. He gained over three seconds in lap number two. It was very, very close, but now he's out in clear water. He got the whole shot, and there you see Sean Torrente, the driver from Miami, Florida, who led this championship after the first win of the year in... Uh, from uh, Portugal and Porti Bow. He led from the pole from the start to the finish. He struggled in London. He took out two boys, got disqualified, got no points. Dropped back into fourth in this championship and now trying to find himself back up. Sitting in fifth place, Jonathan. He started seventh. You mentioned he dropped back. He's up to fifth already. Yeah, and you can see the battle there going on between uh, Ahmed Al Hamli, uh, the uh, victory boat, and uh, the young Trask there ahead of him doing a great job as Al Hamli takes to the outside. This is a tricky boat, the victory boat, very, very short, very wide, does not like these rough conditions, seem to have been struggling a little bit so far this weekend. Talk about struggling, how about Alex Corella? He started down in the 13th position, he's only gained one spot, Jonathan, he's up to 12th, but we expected more from the four-time world champion who's won this race the last two years in a row, actually three, he got disqualified, thrown out in 2015, but he is a dominator here in France, but right now, he's trying to find the pace at a new boat he just needs more boat time i think jonathan to feel confident in it as he's down to that 12th place position trying to catch up the trask who's in 11th and i'm looking at the way that he's driving that boat around there steve either he's got some kind of trim problem with the boat or he just doesn't seem to be on top of it because as he came through the right hander there the boat was almost uncontrollable as you can see around the i was talking about those rollers down in that corner there He's having a fight of his life to try and keep that boat on yeah, the water. Philip Roms is right behind him. He was struggling. He almost lost control of his boat coming out of six. That, for some reason, down on that far side of the course, as it goes around, the land kind of dissipates, opens up the door for winds coming out of the west. Even though we don't have much of a wind today, it still spells uh, very much of uh, doom, and the drivers have to keep an eye on it. Now, Torrente is starting to move up, Jonathan. He's closing up on Francesco Catando. Catando's having a whale of a day as he's 11 seconds back behind the leader. Steve Cantando is absolutely flying. He's doing a great job out there as he starts making up some ground, but uh, Chiap was just ahead of him. I think he may have just uh, overtaken him. Cantando is definitely pushing out. It's the first time we've seen that player's boat running well as it is here today. And Cantando, with the experience that he's got, he is one of the most experienced drivers out here, Steve. He's making up some serious ground. Yeah, Cantando, as we look farther back now, this is the battle for 11th place. We've been watching that with Corella. Catando now has moved up into third. And the question remains, Jonathan, what's happening to Philippe Shep? Shep is sliding down the order. He's down to sixth. We had heard rumors that there was a problem with the engine this morning. And uh, maybe that's the fact because Philippe Shep, who had come up here and qualified up in the second position, is sliding backwards, Jonathan. But you can see there uh, Ahmed Al Hamli having some serious problems as Giaf is off the circuit. Oh, what a shame. The driver is pulling off Philippe Shep. Fourth year in a row, Jonathan, at his home Grand Prix. He doesn't go the distance. He is done for the day. Your championship points leader is gone from the proceedings today, and that'll change this championship around when this day is over. Can you believe that, Steve? Yesterday, he looked solid on the water. He was. He told me that he was not going to push too hard, as we see there, Ahmed Al Hamli cutting off Trask, Trask having a difficult time there, and then on the inside, one of the other boats, Al Hamri nearly collides with him. As they come around the corner there, you can see them fight as they come by and they take a look. That's Alex Corella. That was Alex Corella, Jonathan. 
as he was working his way, trying to get around Philip Ramsey. Grant Trask has dropped back. Corella now moved up a spot, but boy, he had to work hard at it. And now you can see Jonas Anderson, who's in 10th. Side by side, they're battling here as the four-time world champion almost touches the Swede as they go down through the corners. Jonathan over on the east side of the course. Great driving by Anderson down on the far end of the circuit there. You could see there was that battle going on between uh, Corella and Jonas. Corella was on the outside. Jonas saw that gap he's turned him tight and he was away and then you could see that uh, Corella was trying to fight back at him he almost touched him as he came into turn number number two and number three down that far end and uh, but Jonas thought I'm not giving you any ground mate as he sighed his way into the next turn and it looks like he's in control as we go into into lap number seven what a shame Sammy Sellio just off your screen just pulled by he's heading to the uh, start pontoon his day is over for the two-time world champion what a shame for him he's now gone ten races without a victory so Sammy Sellio who last year finished in second here after qualifying third He's done for the afternoon, Jonathan. That's a shame. Yeah, Jonas making some good progress, Steve. He's going to find it tough as he as he gets nearer the sharp end of this uh, of this Grand Prix. But uh, he started right at the back. He's up to tenth at the moment, so he's in the points. He's got uh, Murray Stromoy behind him. You can see them both coming into shot there. But you can see that the current world champion just way behind them, and it looks like they're pulling some serious ground on him. Yeah, as they get their way through now, as they go through the right hand on the far side, that's Anderson in front in the red. Jonas Anderson, of course, a veteran driver, just had a birthday the other day. He's 44 years young out of Fruvi, uh, Sweden. He's looking for his first victory in 10 starts. His last win was in Abu Dhabi back in 2016, and he's uh, had the last two races. He has not finished here, uh, Jonathan, uh, as he uh, has struggled. Actually, uh, for Jonas Anderson, he finished actually in top five last Back year. Back to Cantando in third there. Yellow flag out, Steve. Something's Somebody's going. hit one of the turn boys by the look of it. Oh, what a shame, Jonathan. Oh, we've got a boat over on the far side. It's a 12 boat, Steve. And what a shame as the boat goes over. And that is Philip Roms, the youngster out of Finland. Now, Philip Roms, this is the first time that he's really had bad luck here, Jonathan. France, for him, has been a historic time for him. He got his first podium in 2015 when he started 10th, finished 3rd. Then, two years ago, he started 10th again and finished in 2nd place. So, Philip Roms, this is the second year in a row he's dropped out. And for him, this is only the second accident in his career in 36 starts. So, that's... a uh, pretty strong statement but Philip Roms we saw him Jonathan about three laps earlier struggling with that boat as he and Alex Carella were dueling along with Grant Trask in that 11th place position yeah that, that is a, a really tricky part of the circuit here that's down number five and number six which are the two turns just because before coming down the finish line and uh, you could see that about four or five laps before there were a number of boats bouncing around there as those big rollers come in from the uh, the pleasure boats that we got on the far end of the circuit but this is the problem when you're racing uh, on a circuit like this Steve it's an enormous lake and you might have a boat say going on playing a pleasure boat could be a mile away it takes a long time but eventually the rollers uh, the wash of that boat starts working its way onto the circuit and the lap before would have been a perfect lap where you knew exactly as the, how the water was lying there and no issues at all bang you hit one of those waves and you're gone well i'll tell you what we're almost a quarter of the way through we're glad you're with us today steve michael and uh, jonathan jones here for the 22nd annual grand prix of france in france we've raced in six different places and of course chalon sur -Saint for 11 years jonathan you've you've won you won in chalon sur -Saint years ago as we watch uh, philip rams's boat being towed back in so uh, what a tremendous effort by uh, the people in france because this is the fourth most Grand Prix ever in France. Now let's go back. We'll take a peek at how it all developed here. And you can see a great run that Thani Al Quimsy made from the third spot as we uh, take a look at the start of this race. And we wait as the lights go off. Good jump. And uh, Philippe Shep didn't look like he got the acceleration he was hoping for, Jonathan. And boy, look at Thani Al Quimsy take off from that third starting spot. Alex Corella farther back trying to nose his way through on board we go and you can see Philippe Shep side by side at the moment but look on the right side of your screen here there he comes <laughs> there are Thaniel Quimsey
powering past him. And now you can see that Shep's caught up in a Team Abu Dhabi sandwich. He really can't go left or right. So he does the safe route. He stays to the middle, doesn't try to pinch anybody off, and then heads off and goes to the inside where he thought he could make up ground. But he just couldn't keep up the pace that Eric Stark and Thaniel Quimsey and Team Abu Dhabi have thrown down here in these first 10 laps. Yeah, I got it wrong there, actually, Steve. Uh, I was under the impression that uh, he'd been caught mapping a bit. But blimey, didn't uh, Thani al Quamzi, the Abu Dhabi driver, like you said earlier, we've got a lot of the hierarchy uh, here from the Emirates, and he said he wants to do a good job out All there right, today. take a look here, Jonathan. Sorry to interrupt you, but there you get a chance to watch Torrente slide by Maurice Stromoy. Now, I'll tell you something. Interestingly enough, Sean Torrente's had a great start. He's moved up for uh, three positions. Peter Moran has done the same thing. He's gone from eighth up to fifth. Eric Eden also has moved up a bit as you go on board with uh, Shep and Philippe Shep. The good news is he has come back as we go live with uh, Philippe Shep, who is the three-time world champion. Great to have him back out. We'd love to see him finish a race here, Jonathan. The bad news for him is he's three laps down, but uh, more importantly, he's back out on the water, and all hopes for France are with this number one boat. Yeah, and look at that as they line up there. Number one, uh, Team Abu Dhabi. Number two, Team Abu Dhabi. Number three, great performance from Cantando at the moment. He was only four seconds off, and he could have make up some ground here on the restart if his team... Uh, Team, his crew chief is on the radio to him and when he sees Luis Ribeiro drop that flag which could be anywhere on this circuit he may be able to get the jump but we do know Steve Torrente is very very hungry he knows at the moment that uh, Stark seems to just have the edge on him he wants to prove that he's a good investment for Abu Dhabi so he's going to be pushing for all his worth and uh, it looks really good for Abu Dhabi as we uh, as we as you say go th quarter way through this Grand Prix well, as she had a chance a second ago, as you look at Alex Carella, the two-time winner, the last two years in a row here. And, of course, he is now the defending world champion for the fourth time, actually, for Alex Carella. He's trying to take the next step forward. He's tied with Scott Gilman for second all-time with number of world championships. And, of course, uh, Guido Capellini has the all-time number. Now, Francesco Catando in the yellow boat, uh, just out of your picture, his first victory for Catando was back in 2000 in Poland. Jonathan, the last time Francesco Catando has won was eight years ago, and that was in Shenzhen back in 2010. So he's due. He whispered to me before the race. He said, Steve, I got to tell you something. I got a little problem with the boat, and I'm afraid it's going to become a big problem before I get to the finish line today. So we'll keep an eye on Catando. He wasn't very uh, enthusiastic about going all the way home today to the checkered flag, and he hasn't done that in eight of his last 11 races. So good luck with the boy in that number 37, Francesco Catando. Today. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited to see him up in there in third. And I'll tell you what, you can see how much guts he's got. Some of these boats, they've been very, very careful with them as they drive them on the top of the water here in this really rough conditions in Evian. But Cantando, it looks like his boat just seems to have a slightly better balance on the water. And of course, as I said earlier, because of the experience he's got in these rough conditions, because many years ago, pretty much every race we used to do was in conditions like this. So it looks like he's benefiting from that and uh, Let's keep our fingers crossed that he can keep up the pressure on these Abu Dhabi boats ahead of him. All right, we'll find out now. The Eric uh, Stark uh, scenario is as the green flag comes back. We're back racing here at lap number 11. Now, let's see who can take advantage of this situation. Right away, Corella goes zooming past. Blows by Marit Strummel. And now goes side by side with Jonas Anderson. So Alex Corella now fighting his way forward, getting a bit uh, determined to move by. As we come by, Torrente now on the outside, challenging as we watch the two pair Team Abu Dhabi boats. Eric Stark on your right, Thaniel Quincy on your left, and right behind them is the yellow boat of Catando and Sean Torrente nipping at the heels, trying to make it. Look at that. A one, two, three Team Abu Dhabi. We saw what Torrente did last year here in France on a restart. He didn't jump one boat, he jumped six. So yeah. this is a great fight for third right now. Yeah, Catando there, good restart just ahead as you could say but uh, Stark at the moment uh, 
taking off from where he left off uh, once we have the uh, the yellow a little bit earlier. Look at the pace that he's going and Thaniel comes. He looks like he's got some kind of problem. Catando's closing down on him, Steve. Catando in great speed comes down into turn number five. Now, if you remember a couple of years ago, Catando got tangled up down in that far corner on almost the same place. That time he backed off just a bit. Gave Thaniel Crimsey a bit of a break, but looking right behind him, there's Sean Torrente looking for clear water, going to the inside, going to the outside, trying to figure out a way around this veteran driver from Milan who is starting his 172 races, looking for his 13th uh, victory of his career. But look how Cantando is floating that boat on the top, Steve. You can see all the other boats that are a little bit nose heavy. They're frightened to release the boats to get the maximum speed off the corners. But I tell you what, Cantando is looking at the way he's running there. He's certainly is not frightened he knows this is a best opportunity he's had for I think you said something like about nine years and he's got to keep pushing because I can tell you Torrente is not far behind him well, let me throw you this question as a driver if you know side by side now we see uh, Bartek Marzawak being challenged by the four-time world champion and Alex Corella now side by side as he fights for that ninth place position he started in the 13th spot so he's trying to gain another position he hasn't given up this is a tremendous battle spot and a sponsor and did Corella touch Marzawak? Boy, that's a close call, Jonathan. Did they trade paint down in turn five? Come on, Bartek. You've got to keep the pressure on. He's lost out there badly. That boat was running better. I can tell you that uh, Corella's having a lot rougher ride out there than Marcelac. Marcelac should have closed the door on him there, Steve. He, was, he had the water. He was ahead of him. But he slipped wide. And then you could see the Corella, uh, the experience that he got. He just shot by him. As we watch them go through, it looks like Bartak hasn't given up the fight. As you take a look at Alex Corella, now, as we mentioned, the four-time world champion started 13th. He's now up to ninth, and he continues now to pursue Jonas Anderson, who is right out in front of him. And be in front of him would be uh, Peter Moran, who's down in that seventh position. He's lost a couple of spots, Jonathan. He's trying to gain back the momentum himself. As we look at Corella pushing hard out right now, as we look in front of him, that's the pursuer as he goes after uh, Jonas Anderson, who's not really that close. Right there he goes by, so he's got to gain a few more seconds to take on the challenge. It looks like Carella, as this race goes ahead, he's feeling a little bit more comfortable on that boat. To be very fair to him, before coming here, he, he hadn't sat in one of these barbers since 2009. I, I, I understood that he'd been uh, testing it beforehand, but apparently he had not. So he's been thrown into a Grand Prix in a boat that he's very, very unfamiliar with on probably what is one of the toughest circuits this year. So all credit to him. A lot of people would have been way, way further back than uh, than than, uh, than he would have been. And you can see there, nice turns again as he tries to put that pressure and almost loses it again as he tries to close down on, uh, on Peter Moran and uh, Jonas Anderson. That's the battle for seventh place right now. As Jonas Anderson is up in that seventh spot with Moran right behind him and this man back in the ninth place and uh, by the way the uh, Cedric de Guine, the driver out of France who started down in the 15th spot he's doing well he's moved up four spots he's up in the 11th position as we go back and continue to watch this battle for seventh eighth and ninth spot on the circuit tell you what Barella is uh, he's not at the sharp end but he's certainly giving us a lot of entertainment out there this afternoon as he tries to get through the traffic with that sort of I think ill handling bolt and uh, he's got a handful out there and uh, but you know he's certainly not going to give in he is a four times world champion almost Peter Moran losing the boat there losing a little bit of speed again and slowly but surely dropping back on the outside of him now we have Alex again trying to break down and catch him now these two drivers as we watch them battles toe to toe are about 21 seconds back from the leader as Eric Stark continues to pull away slowly he's about 5.17 seconds ahead of his teammate Thonio Quimsey who's in the second spot Catando now with Sean Torrente they continue a whale of a fight Torrente closing in a little bit more and Eric Eden now getting a little closer to Torrente so the battle for third may be a three boat battle before this is over Jonathan in the last spot on the podium yeah we haven't seen much of Eden but I mean that young Formula 2 driver that's it's his first year in Formula 1 he is doing a mighty job out there as he hangs on to the uh, the lead boat Cantando there still in that position Torrente trying everything inside outside to overtake him Thani putting a little bit of pressure on the lead boat of Stark but it looks to me at the moment as though Stark has got everything under control
There is Eric Hedden, the youngster, only in his third race of his career since stepping up to Formula One. And the youngster who is celebrating his birthday today for the driver from Sweden. Started off the year with a 13th uh, qualifying spot. He finished ninth in the top 10. And then he had a whale of a qualifying effort in London, Jonathan. He came out, went into Q3, and then dropped out of the race. But he was up in the top five. But he's looked, all, he's looked good all weekend. The boat is running very, very well in these rough conditions. No question about it. And he's putting up a blinding performance there in that, uh, in that fifth position. There is the difference between the fourth place Sean Torrente who started down in seventh and Eric Eden and Eric Eden who started down in ninth place he's moved up four positions so these two bows pretty much running about the same speed Torrente did a 57.04 best lap Eric Eden a 57.63 last time around Torrente was a half a second faster than him. Yeah, but he's certainly putting some pressure on Sean at the moment and uh, as we pick up Stark again just driving beautifully in this sport. I mean, Stark, many time World Formula 2 champion, is really showing a lot of these drivers a clean pair of heels out here this afternoon, Steve. As we look at the youngster, Eden, in his rookie season, as we mentioned, it's a good battle now for that third place position, as mentioned. There's Catando through the haze. There's Torrente right behind him. Torrente on the outside now, sliding his way up a little bit closer, inching his way. More and more centimeters. Can he catch him? And watch out for Eden as they go down into the corner now. Eric Eden tries to cut him off and had, was forced to go to the outside. Jonathan, he lost a little grip and a little ground. But I'm telling you something, he's got speed. Torrente better watch out. He certainly had. The other thing is, you know, Contando, you can see the experience. He can see in his mirrors Torrente there. And what he's doing, he's just giving him so much dirty water. He's moving him along outside on the circuit, inside, but making sure that he's got his nose just ahead of him all the time and uh, great driving there from Cantando in third position Torrente struggling like heck to hang on in fourth Cantando now pulled away a bit Torrente better be careful because I can tell you the young guy from Sweden uh, uh, Eric Eden, he's closing down on him fairly quickly last time around the difference between third fourth and fifth was only eight tenths of a second now Cantando has found a little bit more of a ground here he's gained a little bit more and the difference for him now is almost two seconds. So Catando got around a back marker a little bit quicker than Torrente. Torrente was forced to weave and dodge his way through. And uh, he lost about a second and a half. So as they come at you, the yellow buoy is the only right hander on this race course. That's two kilometers around, 1.29 miles on this circuit. Almost halfway, Jonathan. 20 of the 42 in the record books this afternoon. This has been a whale of a start. We've had one yellow flag. We had a restart. And from the start of this race, Eric Stark, who had his second pole in a row, right now currently leads the newcomer for Team Abu Dhabi, leads a 1-2-4 Team Abu Dhabi flying formation. Do you know, it's a funny thing about this blaze boat. You can see there with Cantando. He introduced it about a year ago. And for the first two or three Grand Prix, my goodness, he had some trouble with it. He just couldn't get the performance out of it. But I, he tells me over the winter, they've shortened the boat up a little bit. They've done a lot of work on it. They've studied it. They have telemetry on board. So they know whether it's accelerating well, whether it's got good mid-range speed and top end. And of course, this is playing into his hands here because the boat that he's got works very very well in these rough conditions and maybe he hasn't quite got the speed the overall top speed and acceleration of Torrente but what he can do Stiv he can keep his foot down all the way around the circuit and that is what's making the difference and showing that the boat is really well balanced on these tough in, the, in this tough water. Eric Eden, we just saw him. He was about two seconds behind Torrente. Torrente now just 1.5 seconds behind Catando. We look at Peter Moran, the driver who is in his second season, finished runner-up and rookie of the year a year ago. And this longtime endurance racer who is father-in-law is back out on the race course and he's down in that 16th spot. He's four laps behind, running slow laps, Jonathan. He just wants to uh, continue on, at least get to the uh, checkered flag, Philippe Shep. All eyes were glued on him after he qualified second place. But uh, here you see Jonas Anderson in that seventh place position. Peter Morant trying to catch him. And Jonas Anderson, who has been racing for many years, is a 13-year racing veteran. He hasn't won in the last nine. 
as we mentioned his last win was in Abu Dhabi a couple of years ago and in France he's only run four times in France but he's got two podiums so he knows how to run well here Jonathan he can take great success he'd love to get back to the podium but there's got to be a few more things develop here in the last half of this race before he gets that shot he's in seventh place yeah but he's slowly but surely as you said Steve moving up I mean he started right down with the back of the field he was telling us that he had a problem with one of his engines yesterday um, he doesn't quite know what it was but something broke inside and uh, so he had to switch engines which meant he had to go to the back of the field and making some seriously good progress as the Grand Prix goes yeah, on. Jonas Anderson who started all the way down in about the 17th 18th position has moved himself up 11 positions so he's having the best day of anybody out there right now but Peter Moran now challenging him here the spot for seventh place Moran works his way through goes the outside is there any answer that Jonas Anderson can come up but it looks like the Frenchman has powered on by and Peter Moran now has moved into seventh place sliding Jonasson back as the yellow flag comes out oh my there's another problem on this race circuit we better take a look, Jonathan. Oh, no, Alex Corella, the four-time world champion. Oh, Alex goodness. Corella's year in 2018 continues to get from bad to worse. Corella, he was all the way up into that ninth spot, Jonathan. He started 13th. We followed him for so long. And for the second straight race, Jonathan, Alex Corella, who was starting his 54th career race in his ninth season, has crashed out. That's only four in his career Jonathan can you believe that the other thing is he's sitting very uh, sitting patiently it looks like they're not, he's okay Steve they're talking to him there's no panic there but my goodness is he not having a tough time this year I mean last year he was just the class of the field um, he decided to change from Team Abu Dhabi to the uh, the victory team there based out of Dubai and uh, we do know there's a tremendous amount of competition. I mean, although they're sort of pretty much the same family, there's a lot of competition between Abu Dhabi and, and Dubai and uh, as you say, London, he had a, a terrible race there, just couldn't get the boat to handle and uh, it's pretty much the same here again with a different type of boat. Very much true and you can see the tens of thousands of fans that line this uh, espionage that goes all the way down. You can look off into the far distance and see Switzerland as the Osprey rescue teams over 50 years of experience they are here helping out Alex Corella and as you mentioned earlier Jonathan this boat Alex Corella doesn't feel totally confident with he took it to the very last second this morning in free practice to get time in the boat to, he was pedaling like a gerbil trying to catch up and feel comfortable with this boat and they used every second they could but again uh, it didn't pay off and he's crashed for the second straight race in a row Wow that's surprising and for him well nine points on the air and this is really gonna hurt his uh, championship hopes. Mm, this is really gonna make it tough for him and uh, again on the restart this is gonna be pretty exciting all right all let's take a look up. Jonathan here we go on the replay as he goes down he launches off a wave oh my he goes airborne and he flies the boat up and he's trying to control it Jonathan he just goes out of the picture but you can see him hit a rogue wave and he launched off and he was nose high attitude almost barrel rolled it or blew it over but it looks like he may have barrel rolled it to a stop a hard hit and again a rogue wave coming in just a possibility just a little bit too much for that experienced driver the four-time world champion and he is out of yeah. the contest just unlucky because we've not seen any waves on that part of the circuit uh, as things stand at the moment they've been around five and six and two and three but uh, down past the start finish line there going into uh, into number two it, it most of this weekend it's been pretty calm but uh, that was certainly a big wave that caught him out there and uh, Probably anybody in this position would have uh, found it very, very difficult to get that boat back under control and onto the water. So the Osprey rescue team working with uh, the boat and trying to get the, everybody situated here before we go back out. And of course, so you can look off into the side. You can see in the distance, that's Switzerland, Lausanne, Switzerland. You and I have trucked across the lake a couple of times, but Jonathan, they're being uh, very careful here with uh, the driver Alex Corella you said it I mean he's still sitting in the boat the boat is sort of half sunk and uh, just looking at it is is there a reason that they don't want to take uh, take him out of the boat at the moment because as you can see it's going further and further down um, is he out of the boat I don't think he's out of the boat and into the Osprey boat uh, is he, he he might he might be Jonathan I think you're I th 
So um, we'll continue to wait and see. They were blocked for the view there. We couldn't really yeah. quite see the full but extent, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure he's not, Steve. I'm pretty sure he's still in that boat, and... Uh, well, the procedure they use now, Jonathan, is they don't rush to get a driver out of the boat. They'd rather be cautious, not move him around, put a neck brace on him, yeah. very gingerly bring him back very yeah. slowly and get him back to uh, the, the doctors that we have on hand here, get him in the ambulance and really uh, do a good evaluation on his on his uh, situation and his health. So there's no rush to get him out of that boat and put him in an Osprey boat and get him to shore. Yeah, but this is going to take quite some time. These boats are going to be on a yellow now, I think, for quite some time because the Osprey appear to be in no rush at all. And obviously they're going to take the boat in. It's going to take them a little bit of time if there was no issue there one of the uh, the jet skis that we use to recover the boat you can see two of them there side by side they would normally hook onto the front of that boat and, and actually take it into the shore but with the osprey people still holding on to the boat that means that they're a, they are a little concerned that there could be a problem or are they being just super cautious getting that boat in before they take Corella out and put him into the ambulance to make sure that everything's okay. All this happening down on the far eastern side of the race course down near turns two and three. And uh, still again. Still looking there, Steve. Can you see him in the rescue boat? No, I think he is still in no, his race. No, boat. he's still in his race boat. And yep. You can see one of the boats now towing him away. So has he, maybe he's just got caught in there difficult one to uh, to uh, work out this one well it looks like he's moving around which is a good yeah. sign and there's a concern on four-time world champion Scott Gilman who is the race director and uh, Scott Gilman uh, knows what it's like to have uh, a problem inside a boat of course years yeah. ago in 2007 yeah, yeah. he had a heart attack in the boat yeah. so uh, uh, yeah, right got, now there is concern for Alex Corella we've got the drone there which is uh, just working its way uh, on top of uh, Corella's race boat. You can see it in the top right-hand corner there, and uh, obviously keeping its distance, so it doesn't want to get too involved in what is in fact going on there with Corella and the Osprey rescue team. Little word about the Osprey rescue. Uh, I think they've been going for more than 50 years. They've saved my life time and time again. We have incredibly experienced people on board these two rescue boats. You can see them there. The front of the boat drops down when they draw the driver into the boat. They've got paramedics on board and highly specialized people there um, that are come to every Grand Prix with us. They have been for the last 20 years in, 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 in my case and uh, a very, very important part of Formula One powerboat racing uh, in this day and age. Well, not to speculate too much on his condition, but it was a good sign to see him moving around yeah, in the cockpit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He may have a foot caught. We, we're not sure, but uh, they're going to bring him in uh, very slowly. Oh, and that's it's an good interesting. To see Philippe uh, yeah, He's back out on the water. Yeah. So he must have had some small technical problem there, and uh, they've been working on it on the pontoon. He's lost a number of laps, but you know, Steve, anything can happen. There's still a long way to go in this race, and Chap back out on the water. Yeah, he's back in the uh, 15th position as uh, Alex Corella now, as they go around and they continue to lap and count laps, just fell behind him. So Shep, who is a total of three laps back before he came back out, is sitting there in 15th position. Now, this is a good time now to talk about the points, Jonathan, where literally you sit here and you, you put it all together. Now, if you win a race, you get 20 points. If you finish second, you get 15. If you're on the podium in third, you get 12. And then we go down from four, well, that's nine points, five, and all the way down to one single point in tenth. So even if Corella, uh, well, who is now gone, with Philippe Shep now moving in front of him, he's up to the 15th position. He still needs to move up five more spots. It's going to be difficult for him because he's going to have to go like a, a man possessed because he's uh, three laps down. But again, he's trying to prove a point. Hey, I got to the finish line in France. I've never done that before. And this is his fourth try at it here in Evian. And as we've seen already out there, Steve, you know, anything can happen here. The water conditions are incredibly strange. One minute you're running around and everything's, you know, everything is nice and calm. And then, of course, the next minute, uh, you know, you've got these rollers to contend with. But uh, we can see the... Uh, the doctor there, the, on, uh, the doctor that's on the, uh, the land side of uh, this Grand Prix, uh, talking to the Osprey Rescue, explaining what's going on there. So he's, he's in, Carella's in good hands, that's all I will say. And uh, as things stand at the moment, 
there's another chance maybe for Cantando to move up another slot, but there's also another chance for Torrente to take Cantando for that uh, final podium. So there's going to be a lot happening there, Steve, in the next two or three laps. Watch out for what goes on. Two experienced drivers, as you mentioned, Torrente last year on a restart jumped six boats and moved himself up and got himself on the podium after starting all the way down in the 15th position. Now, Catando, who has raced 172 races, and he's won 14 different races, so he's not going to give up. He's a wily old veteran here, so it's not going to be easy for Torrente. Who's out of the race? Simone Schuff, she never started. Sami Stelio, uh, unofficially classified in the 18th spot. He got six laps in. His teammate, Philip Rahm, 17th in seven spots. As we look at this great crowd of people here, sun-drenched day, 82 degrees Fahrenheit, 28 degrees Celsius. Little wind, a perfect afternoon, Jonathan, here on Lac Le Mans. Yeah, and some great racing, my goodness. I can say one thing, when these guys have finished this race, they know they've been in a Grand Prix, and uh, we just got um, Jonas Anderson there and the young Eric Eden in fifth. Great display by that young driver. As I said earlier, many time uh, Formula 2 winner, Thinking, I'm not sure if he's won a world championship in Formula 2, but he's he's been brought on board by Jonas Anderson, who has done a great job with this young driver over the last five or six Grand Prix, and is pushing him really hard to get him to the front of the field. Yeah, somebody we haven't talked about much today, Ahmed Al Hamli, who qualified 10th, disappointing for him, as uh, he was uh, he's since charged his way up into the sixth spot, so he's the sole representative now fi flying the flag for uh, the victory team. And he's going to try to stay ahead of Jonas Anderson as Eric Eden, as you mentioned, in that fifth spot. Anderson in seventh for Team Sweden looking strong. And they decided time to fix that uh, right hand uh, buoy since we're bringing uh, Alex Krella back in very slowly. Yeah, so somewhere along the way, they, they normally have two turn boys uh, at each point so that if one goes down, the other one can be can remain inflated. Uh, 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 yeah inflated as, as, as right, I, exactly as I tried to get out but uh, they're gonna pop another one on there now Steve so that if there's any issues going forward with the Grand Prix at least they won't be able to stop it and put out another yellow as we see there Cantando strange looking boat uh, the rear cowling is very different to ever, anything we've seen for quite some time all I can say is that I've looked at the build quality of this uh, blaze boat that uh, they construct in in Italy um, uh, it, the family concern run the Blaze uh, construction company in Formula One boats. They've also got a Formula Four boat, which won actually in London at the last Grand Prix. We didn't have, we don't have any Formula Fours out here this weekend, but it looks like they're slowly but surely making some solid progress with those boats and uh, already proved that it's a winner in Formula Four. And as we see today, it's uh, it certainly is a strong contender in the World Championship this year in Formula One. Cockpit still up on the leader as Eric Stark trying to get some air in as you take a look at uh, Jonas Anderson and uh, Peter Moran in that battle for seventh place. And it's interesting now because you, you talk about uh, Francesco Catando in his 22nd season. And uh, it's funny, you know, he was studying to be a lawyer and uh, decided to go elsewhere. But his family is so close, so well knit. At, uh, it's all about boating as we watch them put on that second buoy, a protective buoy, in that right-hander turn number four. And as you mentioned, he, he trained to be a lawyer, and he's been concentrating on his powerboat racing uh, activities in, in recent years. But somebody told me this morning that he's actually going back into law now. So, um, you know, so that obviously, eventually, when he de decides to hang, hang, hang up his... Uh, his crash helmet, he'd probably go back into that profession and uh, he's just picking up really from where he, where he left off uh, uh, probably about 10 or 15 years ago. I should think things have changed a heck of a lot, especially in, with Italian law. Absolutely. <laughs> in those number of Changing years. Changing drama. And I'll yeah, tell you yeah. something too, uh, good on you for that comment. And uh, as we say uh, very well in Australia, how's our boy from uh, down under doing? Grant Trask, he's down in the 13th position. So Grant started at 11th, so he's uh, just hanging in there. They're, they're mm. really going to do a lot of work with that boat because we've got a bit of time off before we head off to uh, China back in uh, late September. So it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how much uh, progress that team makes.
Now, they build their own boats out in Australia. His father, Bob, and uh, his, his uncle, um, David Trask, who have been involved in, in powerboat racing for many, many years. And I've seen that boat run in the past, and it, I've got to say it does look good on the water. And wouldn't it be nice to have an Australian driver competing in an Australian boat? I mean, most of the team is Australian, you know. And, and as I say, he thinks it's a lot stronger than the DAC that he's running here in the championship. He says he doesn't like this particular boat that much he's been so used to the boat that they developed as a family in australia so fingers crossed there was talk that maybe for china we might see that new boat uh, i think they call it a gtr um, which is built uh, on the gold coast in australia and you know let's 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 see some more boats out there because it gives us things to talk about it, it's great to see people making progress with these boats um, you know, like some of the top teams here, like uh, 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 Team Abu Dhabi. All right, they're bunching up now. They're playing a little bit of game. Trente backed off, and now he's closed up on Catando. This fight for the top five is going to be red hot. And don't forget about Ahmed Al Hamli with the victory team back in that sixth spot. The top six with Jonas Anderson right behind him. It's going to be dynamite here. As probably as we work our way through, Jonathan, we're starting to run out of time here. It's either you run the 42 laps or you run a 45 minute event. And uh, it's pretty well spelled out in the rule book. So we're going to find out here when and if we get the green flag here. As we look at Jonas Anderson and uh, for the uh, veteran from uh, Sweden who just had a birthday uh, a couple of weeks ago. And there you can see that uh, uh, Roberio, who is our commissioner, Luis, talking with uh, crew chiefs on the radio. And he's keeping an eye next to uh, Eric Stark's father who is going to be the first to yell at his son, go, 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 if we get the green flag here shortly. Yeah, um, it'll be interesting because I couldn't see that he had the green flag in his hand, yeah. so they're probably waiting, Steve, for the Osprey boats to get back into position. Yeah. As we go. As we go back to green flag racing here with just 11 laps left to go. Flat out to go down to the back corner there. Eric Stark with a hole shot trying to hold off Thani Al Quimsy, his teammate. Right now it's a 1-2 team Abu Dhabi with Catando trying to stay in shouting distance. And here comes Torrente as he tries to push forward as they come by. Torrente on the outside trying to make it 1-2-3 with team Abu Dhabi. But Catando's holding him off as they go down into turn number two. Side by side, Torrente trying to close. Catando trying to slam the door on him, Jonathan. Oh, this is going to be close as they go into that turn. Very, very tight. Cantando keeping an inside tight line. Torrente having to go around the outside. Daniel Quamsey in all sorts of trouble there as he tries to see the, through the spray of the lead boat of uh, Eric Stark. But what a restart there. Unbelievable from Stark. Perfect timing. Cantando on the outside. It looks like Torrente's moved into third, Steve. And Sean Torrente to drive out of Florida side by side, but Cantando hasn't given up, and now they're nipping out the heel of the second place belt, Donny Alquimsey. Torrente now noses ahead, now takes on uh, Donny Alquimsey, but he was forced to go wide. C Catando slammed the door on him. Catando almost got hit by Eric Edden as they go into turn number six. Catando had to back off. He may have lost two spots, Jonathan. He did. What a shame yeah. for the driver from Milan. Wow, what great driving from that young Swedish driver, Eric Edden. He saw that gap. He could see that Catando was fighting with uh, Torrente, and he thought, I'm going for it, you know. Lock Lots of lots of uh, gusto there as he turned in on the boy and got that position back. Eric Eden now up to fourth, Cantando down to fifth. As you're looking long distance, you saw Sean Trente lead this championship after winning off the pole in Portimao back about two months ago. And he got disqualified for taking out two buoys, lost his lead in this championship, and now he's fighting back strongly, trying to make it a one, two, three finish for Team Abu Dhabi. But Eric Eden hasn't given up his chase. You can see Cantando starting to drop back a little bit more on the youngster from Sweden. As Team Sweden boat now up into the fourth spot, he's challenging Torrente. He wants to get on the podium for the very first time of his career, Jonathan. He is pushing as hard as he can, but Steve, to be fair, it looks as though Torrente, he's just building a bit of a gap, but uh, to me, you know, Cantando, he was on the inside there, Torrente was on the outside. It was a case of who was going to give in coming into turn number five, and Torrente basically just kept 
kept them battled right, kept his foot down and uh, managed to just keep ahead of him. And then we saw young uh, Eric Eden there dive in and uh, take that slot from Cantando. Donny Alquimsey hasn't given up the fight. It's down to 2.28 seconds. He's challenging the Swedish driver, his new teammate, Eric Stark, who came over from the Maverick team after winning in London. Donny Alquimsey knowing that the dignitaries that run this club, the Team Abu Dhabi Club, are here in attendance today. He's trying to put on a great act. And for Thani El Quimsey, as you look at the leader, Eric uh, Stark, as he continues to fight his way and hold off Thani El Quimsey, he has a one in 26 races. So he's doing his best to turn around the tide and get back on a winning streak again. And I don't know whether you saw it, just at the back of that shot there, Cantando and Eric Eden, by goodness, they were close as they fought for that fourth position. But let's go back. I don't want to say too much about Stark at the moment, but he has not put a foot wrong at this Grand Prix, just as he did in London. Qualified on pole position with his own boat, and uh, he just dominated the race. Well, he hasn't dominated so much here as he as he did in London, because Thani Alcomzi in that second position has definitely not given up that pressure that he's put on him. But he seems to have the legs on everybody else here again for the second Grand Prix in the trot. Thani Alcomzi, as you look at Sean Torrente, may have been revived this year. He is racing on fire. He's got a new determination. He's looking strong. He finished second in Portimao, fourth in London, as you watch the two go by and there you see Sean Torrente in his eighth season and uh, very disappointed about yesterday as he somehow got uh, confused and they got all wrapped up in that uh, Q3 he thought uh, he was gonna push for the final time but uh, he and his radio man well he did his best and uh, it didn't work for him so he ended up starting down in the seventh spot but Torrente we knew today was gonna push and he's moved up seven uh, four spots from seventh to third and he's still not given up the hunt as we got six laps to go. But you can see how, how important it is, Steve, to get that pole position. You know, uh, Stark today, he had a perfect line. He had clear water for a number of laps. He was being able to build up that gap. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what it means to get pole position. And yesterday, as you said, with 20 seconds to go, there were five changes in the top six positions. And, and people like uh, Sean, just happened to be you know unlucky really he got caught out he looked he looked very comfortable that he could go into the shootout and uh, and obviously at the end of it he plummeted down from something like third or fourth down to about seventh and uh, you know that's how quick things were happening here yesterday due to the rough conditions less than five laps to go here at the 22nd annual grand prix of france we're glad you're with us today steve michael Jonathan Jones, past winner, multi-time world champion, just soaking up the sunshine and the excitement today. 28 degrees centigrade, 82 degrees Fahrenheit, little wind, and we are seeing a, a slapstick sort of a day of great, wonderful racing. A lot of lead changes, a lot of drama, and uh, it continues on here with less than uh, five laps to go, Jonathan. Yeah, and as you said earlier, Steve, with the, uh, the ruling family of uh, Abu Dhabi, we understand here this weekend um, I think Thani said to you that it was more important to do well here than actually do well in Abu Dhabi. Well, I mean, they must be well chuffed. Uh, I think I saw them earlier with their family and uh, to have Abu Dhabi first, second and third, I mean, must be a dream for that team and for Guido Capellini that is, is uh, in charge. He's the team manager of that team. Uh, they swapped from Scott Gilman. He went over to victory and uh, they've created a brand new team there. And it's gonna take them a little bit of time for Scott to get everything dialed in. So watch out for victory come halfway to three quarter way through the season. But as things are at the moment, Steve, Abu Dhabi seem to have it all their own way. They're looking great right now. They're flying in formation, one, two, three. And as they come by, you get a chance to look at Eric Eden. Catando hasn't given up his charge as we saw him all the way up in the third after he qualified in the uh, fourth spot today, started in that spot, moved up to third. And now you can see a little bit more heat coming from Peter Moran, the driver out of France, the CTIC China team. And uh, the driver from Rouen, France, 38 years old, and only his second year. He was runner-up in uh, the Rookie of the Year battle last year and uh, continues to impress here in 2018. Jonathan, he finished fifth in Portimao, finished third. First podium ever in London after qualifying third. So this driver is a driver of the future. Someday the keys of the kingdom will be turned over to him from Philip Schaap, his father-in-law. And uh, not so fast yet, though. Philip Schaap still chasing his fourth world championship. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that uh, 
all the, the guys working for Team Abu Dhabi with these three guys now pulling away from the rest of the field. My guess is they sh the Guido Capellini should be uh, telling the radio guys, look, it looks like we've got everything in the bag, three laps to go. Let's just turn the wick down just that little bit. Put, don't put so much pressure on the engines and on the bolts because we want to come home here with a one, two, three. Eric Stark now, your leader, sliding out of the corner. He took the pole, the second pole in a row for 2018. The newcomer for Team Abu Dhabi coming up. He's the new recruit, and boy, is he paying off in dividends right now for this Team Abu Dhabi circuit as the one, two, three drivers are coming by and they are currently one two three on this race course with eric edden trying to break up the party as he's back in fourth place but he's going to need to find two and a half seconds on sean torrente with two laps to go that may be just a little bit too much for the youngster yeah and, and funny enough this morning i spoke to capellini we, we we don't really say too much together to be honest we've had a uh, one or two battles uh, over the years and but i do have to say i've got i have to respect him in some way okay but uh, the one thing I did say this morning was great choice when, uh, when we were just chatting briefly about Eric Stark because he's very confident, he's got a tremendous ability. The balance that he has with the boat is really, really good. And uh, uh, my understanding is that he started off using his own uh, special seat that he would had made for him. Uh, they took it out of his old boat, put it in this boat because he said he feels more comfortable in it. Uh, but he seems to have been on the money right from the start. All right, here in the final lap as we watch them come by here on this 2.08 kilometer race circuit. There you see Thaniel Quimsey, three seconds behind the leader. Here's Eric Stark in his very first race, the new recruit for Team Abu Dhabi coming down the back straightaway. In his shadow is Thaniel Quimsey, and behind him is Sean Torrente. Torrente fought all the way back from seventh, moved up to third. Daniel Quimsey started second, but this man started on the pole after running a 37-7-1 yesterday. A tremendous run for him as he comes by now. Eric Stark running down. He's got two more buoys to go. And the driver, the 30-year-old from Sweden, looking down, and he looks up. He can almost coast home as he comes out of the final corner. Flying in perfect formation, Team Abu Dhabi at the Grand Prix of France finishes one, two, and three on a great day for Team Abu Dhabi, dominating here in Evian in France. My goodness, they have to be pleased. They worked really hard, this team, fair play. I mean, uh, there's about 10 or 12 of them. They beam, oh, and Cantando's unfortunately stopped on the last lap. What a shame, because he was putting on such a fantastic show out there. That is misery for the 42-year-old from Milan. He warned me early in the in the afternoon. He said, I may have a little problem, may determine and become a big problem. And for the ninth time in 12 races, he doesn't get to the finish line. Steve, you're a man of statistics. When did we last see a world championship team finishing first, second, and third in a Grand Prix. I cannot remember the day, the last day that that happened, if it ever, if it's ever happened. If it ever happened, it would have been back in the early 80s, but yeah, uh, yeah. it hasn't happened in the modern era. What a congratulatory yeah. uh, degree with this team Abu Dhabi. They're all excited, why not? There's many members on this team that worked very, very hard. Each one of these drivers today, finishing in the top three, had their yeah. own story, had their own drama, had their own, uh, you know, fighting their way through some of their gremlins. It wasn't a perfect weekend for everybody, except for this man, Eric Stark. He's got to be elated. Hey, new team, new victory. Here uh, we go. Made it look easy, didn't yeah, and, it? And like you said earlier, you know, at the beginning of the year, they decided they were not going to compete. And his father took out the checkbook, as he has done many times in the past, and said, OK, let's do the first couple of races. And uh, Jean Vital's team, uh, the French team, uh, uh, they took him on board for the first couple of races and then he had this opportunity where you know he was uh, taken from under the nose of other people uh, and other teams and uh, Capellini wasn't slow to pick him up and uh, offer him a position he obviously knew that he had tremendous ability and uh, my goodness how things can turn around in a couple of races Eric Stark picks up the victory and a tremendous run for him Yes, he won back in 2017, a year ago in Harbin for the first time, won in London, and now this is his third victory of his career. Wow, fantastic run. Eric Stark, the new hero here in France, as he wins for the very first time here on French soil.
and I bet this means a lot to him. It must mean a tremendous amount to his dad as well, who supported him over the years. And uh, you know, all through Formula Two, he did a great job. I mean, he was he was the benchmark in Formula Two for many years. Then he came into Formula One. He's he's really just felt his way for the last year. But uh, you could see that the potential was there. And look at all the team there congratulating him and uh, a well-deserved drive from a a guy. And not only that, in these really, really tough conditions that we've had uh, here in uh, Evian this weekend. Yeah, no, tremendous run for him. And uh, I'll tell you what, I think they're pretty happy about uh, themselves getting into a position where they had a couple of yellow flags. They had to tone themselves down a little bit and yeah, they had a chance yeah. to cool off Eric Stark, you know, kicking over the canopy up, getting some air circulation through. So, I mean, it could have been uh, more worn out features by Eric Stark, but he's pretty fresh. And look at this guy, Sean Toronto, he's going crazy. He was so yeah. disappointed yesterday. He couldn't believe he, his bad luck getting tossed out of the uh, top uh, six and going for Q3, but uh, he made it up. He did it a year ago. He moved up 12 spots a year ago from 15th to finish third on the podium. Well, guess what? He's back on the podium. And for Sean Torrente, this is the third year in a row he has gone to the podium here in France. Not a bad run for a guy. Four races, three podiums, and uh, a tremendous day for the driver from Florida who really dug himself out of a bit of a hole today. And uh, he proved once again, hey, I may have not won the race, but I'm right with all these other guys. And uh, it's going to be equal footing for all three of these. And the championship uh, continues to tighten up now that uh, Philippe Shep dropped out of the points and picked up none. And Eric Stark will be our new leader in this yeah. championship. And the secret now is that the captain keeps control of the ship, Steve. You know, the Capellini, he makes sure that these guys, they push each other, but they push each other fairly. So he doesn't, he wants to make sure that they keep their distance on the circuit from each other. And if they win, they win fairly and they don't sort of cause issues within the team. But at the moment, everything looks pretty content there. You can see Sean Torrente talking to uh, Stark there and, uh, yeah, he, you know, he finished third, but... He's got to be fairly happy because he was in the doldrums yesterday, wasn't he? You know, he wasn't in the top six. You could see him. He threw his helmet down. He jumped out of the boat. He was going crazy. And uh, to come back onto the podium, good, good, a good showing there from Torrente. Important finishes for all three of these drivers because now there's a bit of a lull in the schedule. We wait until we head off into the early fall when we go to China. So yeah. you got a lot of time to think about how you did today. So if you finish well today, you got a few months to go, wow. I did well yeah. or if you're digging yourself out of a hole you got a lot of questions and a lot of time to try to solve the problem so far this european calendar was fantastic jonathan we saw a chance to watch eric stark come out of nowhere starting the very first race of his uh, 2018 season in portimao he wasn't even sure that he was going to race he didn't even know until about two weeks before portimao that he even had a ride or had the funding to go ride and then he did he finished 10th and then moved over and got a chance to run with the Maverick team, of course, and then one in London, and the rest is all history right now. With two wins in a row, he slides up to the number one position in this points championship, and guess what? His teammates are right there with him, flying in formation, as we talked about. Yeah, but as we know, Steve, things in this sport can change pretty quickly, can't they? I mean, you know, we've seen so many uh, world championships where by halfway through the season, we guessed everything was, you know, in the hands of a certain driver, and, and looked as though he was going to win. And then all of a sudden, you, one race, that's all it takes for something to go wrong somewhere. And then the championship is wide open. So this is going to be one heck of a championship this year uh, with some high quality teams, uh, high quality driving out there. And it's, I think it's going to go right down to the wire. I do too, Jonathan. Let's take a look at the uh, unofficial results as they stand here as the race to, uh, just finishing about five minutes ago. Eric Stark, your winner today, picking up 20 points, and he wins by 2.38 seconds over his teammate, Thaniel Quimsey, who has renewed vigor, and he is looking strong this year as he's finished every race up in the top three. Sean Torrente right there in that third place, digging himself out of a hole, coming up from the seventh spot, making the podium for the third straight year. Eric Eden finishing in the fourth position. This young rookie continues to impress in a big, big way. Peter Moran, the driver from France, and only his second year, looking strong too, another top five performance. And Marit Stromoy, the uh, woman driver from Norway, up in the top seven. She's gotta be pleased, she continues to pick up points. And her teammate, of course, uh, 
Bartek Marzwak finishing up in the eighth place after having a stellar performance in qualifying in the fifth spot yesterday. Ahmed El Hamli, well, there he is, ninth place. He started in tenth, and uh, of course, farther down, of course, here we have a bit of a problem with Catano thinking he had made it to the end and was going to get uh, red hot points. Nothing but heartbreak for him on that very last lap. He didn't get home, and then, of course, uh, the driver from uh, Germany, Samu Schiff, didn't get a chance to start. So at 18, drivers officially begin and uh, on a very, very hot day here. 82 degrees Fahrenheit, 28 Celsius. Let's take a look at the highlights of this race, the 42 laps that we ran. It was an exciting afternoon here, starting at the start. You can see on the pole, as Eric Stark raced off, he felt pressure, not from the teammate uh, in third place at the beginning, but it was uh, Philippe Shep. But then all of a sudden, Thaniel Quimsy got right alongside and a great shot. There you can see that uh, Philippe Shep caught him in a bit of a sandwich here. And look at both drivers go ahead. And Thaniel Quimsy getting the ace of a start, but was forced to stay wide as you're told to maintain your lanes. And that's exactly what he did. And when that happened, he was able to nose up on the outside and get past Philippe Shep. So right off the bat in the opening lap, it was a team Abu Dhabi 1-2. And look at Thaniel Quimsy. He did not give up in his fight as Philippe Shep back in third. And then the battle, Katando in that fourth place position, feeling the heat from Bartak Marzouak. And Katando moved himself uh, into position for a podium place that later on he would not get. And you can see how rough the uh, nosing of the boats as they try to get through as Torrente fighting his way through. What a great start, Jonathan. Oh, unbelievable. What a brilliant start. And I mean, I thought that uh, Chap was caught count nothing, but uh, I, he certainly wasn't because it was even Stevens. But Farney in that third position, my goodness, was he carrying some speed. But of course, he, ha as you say, he had to keep that line. And uh, because of that, um, you know, he, he couldn't fight for that lead. Yeah, Philip Rahm's having a problem. He barrel rolled. He dropped out on lap seven on the restart. You can see the pushing there. Alex Corella trying to move up. Now, he started all the way down in 13th position. As mentioned, he won the last uh, two races in a row here at Evian. As Eric uh, Stark continued to pull away. He maintained probably his best advantage was close to four seconds on his teammate as Corella continued to fight a boat. And there he lost control of the Baba. Oh, my. He went over. And what a shame for Alex Corella, as we mentioned, only the second time in a row. And that's the fourth accident and a whole slew of starts as this was his 54 start, but only his fourth accident, Jonathan. Very rare. And you can see the concern on Scott Gilman's face. Yeah, and you can see there the Osprey team taking a little bit of time to uh, check him out, but I'm sure he looks okay, and, uh, you know, on the restart, Steve, back to you. Well, as they get set to go, it took a matter of about eight to ten laps to get the restart going once again, but once it did, the action did not let go as it only hotted up here, and there you can see Torrente challenging and now finally getting nose-to-nose, -nose, side by side, trading paint with... Francesco Catando, Franz doing his best to hold him off, but the driver from Florida was able to nose his way up and make it a 1-2-3, Team Abu Dhabi. But here, Catando almost took him on the inside. Yeah, Cantando there, was, it was a real tough fight then. You could see that uh, if Cantando kept his tight line on the inside, Torrente couldn't slow the boat down. Maybe he could have turned on the inside of him and retained that position. And then Catano, tears for Catano and his team. The drama was over in a hurry on the very last lap. And Sean Torrente would cement his name again on the trophy in that third place position as he would come home. And Team Abu Dhabi having a dream of a day in front of uh, their sponsors as Thaniel Quimsey back in that second spot with renewed vigor in his career looking so strong here in 2018. But it was all about this man, Eric Stark, in a new team, the recruit for Team Abu Dhabi would circle around and come out of the corner and you can see it flying in perfect formation team abu dhabi would finish one two and three to the elation of many of these fans who came from abu dhabi and the french fans as you see eric stark's father and the enthusiasm from everybody Guido Capolini, his wife and his young son, everybody joining in on the party. A perfect day for Team Abu Dhabi.
Unbelievable, Stephen. There you can see uh, Star coming in. Oh my goodness, he must he must be feeling a million dollars at the moment. <laughs> there you can see Solom, who is the <laughs> manager of the club. He is so excited. Yeah. And why not? These are days you can only dream about, Jonathan, finishing one, two, three. And uh, it was a perfect day for Team Abu Dhabi, and they got the job done, and the enthusiasm would continue for the next uh, five to ten minutes as all three boats came back in. Yeah, and I guess this guy's future is now secured, Steve Stark, you know. He's, he's battled away there for quite some time, and, uh, uh, you know, he's shown his potential at many, many Grand Prix last year, and, uh, and all of a sudden, everything just seemed to gel this year, didn't it, and all come back together, and wow. What a performance. Yeah, it was a real performance, I'll tell you. So as the drivers are making their way slowly to the podium, we'll stay with them. And then, uh, tell you what, Jonathan, let's take a look at the Drivers' Championship now. The unofficial points, and a lot of things have changed. Eric Stark now moves to that number one spot. But look at that, two points away from Thaniel Quimsey, who remains in that second spot. Torrente now with 32, comes back up two positions. He sits in that third place. Philip Schaap goes from uh, one down to the fourth place for the veteran driver from France. And his uh, brother-in-law, or as I should say his son-in-law, is now one point behind him for that battle for fourth place. And then Eric Eden with 11 points this afternoon. He's getting stronger as the season goes on. Could be rookie of the year. And then Ahmed Al-Hamli picked up uh, a couple of points uh, today. And then Alex Corella, of course, uh, remains at nine points. He's dropping down the calendar, having a very disappointing year so far for him. Reed Strumoy, a steady day, sitting in ninth place. Tommy Celio, he didn't last long. He was gone in six laps. He's got to be bitterly disappointed. And, of course, for the young Trask today, Grant Trask finishing out of the points in the 12th place position. Jonas Anderson, who came charging from the back, came up, and he finished six. He had a whale of an afternoon. He picked up a few more points. Forte Benevente, Catanda, of course, no points for him. Jean Vitel de Guin, he finished 10th. He picked up a point. And then Bartak Marzouak. He finished eighth, he got three points. And of course, uh, Philip Roms dropped out in an accident. And Simone Schuf and uh, Meta Brockness fared to pick up any points. So that is the driver's standings. Let's take a look at the team standings now. And it's all about these guys, Team Abu Dhabi. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you something. What a great, great effort for these drivers. And now uh, let's check the team points. And Team Abu Dhabi unofficially running away with it by 91 to 53. But Jonathan, we're, as you mentioned earlier, we're only a third of the way, really, just barely uh, into the season. And three races in Europe are now over. But the CTIC China team is going to need some help. And the Maverick team looking good. They're up into third spot with uh, the victory team uh, in the fourth place position. But you better believe that uh, Scott Gilman is going to go back and he's going to do a lot of work both in Italy and in Dubai to uh, save some face and really turn around this wonderful team that he has, the victory team. Yeah, I think you mentioned that he, was, he, he had planned to go on holiday to stay with you in America for a couple of weeks. But uh, I think this morning, as you said, he's, he's changed those plans. They're going back to Italy. They're building a couple of new boats in Dubai. This is our understanding, Steve. And, uh, you know, they'll obviously be improving on... What they, they've, they've learned probably quite a bit from, from what they've already uh, produced this year. And uh, there's two new boats coming out of that stable. Um, they've got a, a massive workforce there, so building a boat for them is, is pretty easy. They'll be doing a lot of testing at Casale Monferrato, uh, which is in, uh, in Italy, where Gilman lives. They've got their own test circuit there. And uh, believe me, when it comes to China, I'm pretty sure the victory will be bouncing back. They'll bounce back, but will they be able to bounce high enough to get uh, on par with uh, Team Abu Dhabi, who look very strong at the moment? And there you see, of course, uh, some of the dignitaries, of course, from Abu Dhabi as they uh, filter around their uh, drivers in uh, a very proud moment for Team Abu Dhabi. Yeah, I think that uh, you can see there the guy with the uh, glasses on. I understand that he's one of the... Uh, ruling family of, of the Emirates and of Abu Dhabi and boy my goodness he must be pleased today to have come here doesn't often come to a Grand Prix but to come and have three boats on the podium I mean that is something something special for that family sure to be yeah that was a discussion earlier the drivers were feeling a lot of pressure knowing that their boss was here and as you mentioned ruling family of uh, Abu Dhabi and that's exactly what the case was and uh, boy, I'll tell you something, under pressure, it was no problem for Team Abu Dhabi. Now, this is a lovely vantage point here for 
this podium procedure one of the historic buildings here in downtown lovely Evian, which is an exquisite holiday destination and spa resort city here on the shores of Lac Lamont. It's visited by uh, royalty for the last two centuries. And uh, as they bring the dignitaries out, they'll introduce them and then uh, they'll bring out the drivers. Uh, three, two, one, you get a chance to see Eric Stark in celebration here. This uh, population of the town is only about 8,800. But uh, again, as we talked about, this is a huge resort area. And why not with days like this, Jonathan? I'll tell you something. You could spend the summer here, no problem. It's such a lovely, lovely area. Yeah, and somebody must have been looking down at us, Steve, because you just, for the last four years, midweek, the week before the Grand Prix, this lake was like the ocean. My goodness, the waves were like six and seven feet high, and there is no way we could have been able to uh, put these, even put them on the water, let alone race them. But, you know... Uh, two days, uh, the day before uh, uh, free practice on Thursday, all of a sudden the wind just dropped down and the conditions have been absolutely superb. There he is, the man from Florida, Sean Torrente, taking the third step. And he was determined today. He said, listen, I'm so bitterly disappointed at what happened yesterday. Today, my focus is getting to the front. And boy, he did. He got himself right on the podium for the third straight year. And there's... Daniel Quimsey, another trip to the podium. And for him, that's his 20th career podium. And what a great, great day for him. Make that 33 trips to the podium for Daniel Quimsey. Eric Stark, a bit of a newbie. As for Eric, <laughs> this is uh, only his fifth season racing, and this is only his 13th podium, but he now has three victories. Back-to-back -back wins here in 2018. As he elevates and charges himself up to the number one scoring position, he leads this driver's championship with 41 points after finishing 10th in his first race in uh, Portimao and then back-to-back -back wins London and here. But his teammate is right behind him, as is his other teammate, Sean Torrente. So early on, the momentum is with Team Abu Dhabi. The question now is, Jonathan, will it continue to go that way as the season moves along? Yeah, um... But they look, I wouldn't say they look formidable, but, well, they do, don't they? But, uh, you know, we do know that uh, Team CTIC China, um, they've already got a new boat in the wings. And uh, I think with the races uh, coming on in uh, China next, maybe they need to concentrate a little bit more on that boat because the next couple of races, Steve, are going to be pretty calm, which means that these boats that these Abu Dhabi drivers are running at the moment, the very, very short and wide boats, you know, they're going to big, give them a big advantage. So I think CTIC, they got to certainly get down, do their homework, get that board out, and uh, see whether they can run it uh, for the next two Grand Prix, which, of course, for us, it'll be great because just more to talk about. Exactly. And CTIC China, as we listen to the national anthem of the UAE, uh, are true professionals, and they are not going to give up by any means. They're just going to get more and more determined. They're going to dig down deep and uh, come charging back as they head for their home Grand Prix. Yeah, but uh, I think you mentioned earlier, and I have to mention him again, Eric Eden, where the, the young uh, suite that came in fourth and pushed these guys pretty much all the way. And bearing in mind, how many Grand Prix has he done? Three or four? I mean, you know, it's very unusual. There we are. He's done three, Steve. Very, very unusual for a young lad to be pushing to the front uh, and putting up these performances in tricky conditions out here. You know, a guy that's uh, just come into Formula One. It normally takes quite some time, but uh, watch out for that guy in the future. Eric Eden finished fourth, as you mentioned. Jonas Anderson sixth. A great day for Team Sweden and uh, for a team that's always uh, out uh, chasing new sponsorship. It was a very important day for Jonas Anderson and Eric Eden, believe me. Yeah, it was, and uh, Jonas, who runs Team Sweden, you know, we've said it before, and I'll, I'll say it again now, I mean, you know, they, they do struggle a little bit as a team financially, they don't have the, uh, the mega bucks that uh, teams like Team Abu Dhabi have, but they can put on as good a show, and, uh, you know, it, it would be nice to see some recognized branding on Team Sweden's boats going forward, and uh, that'll help them to push even harder against these three Abu Dhabi drivers. They put on a great celebration here in Evian as the confession. <laughs>